Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel, Crimson Panda here with another episode of Mercenary Matter. Now, we haven't done one of these in a little while. Now, the reason behind that is because I wanted everybody to get their new 18 mercenaries up to PvP ready. So hopefully I've given you all enough time to be able to do that. And I have nine new comps that I want to share with you today. So all you have to do if you're trying to find something to play is head back to this video. I'm going to put all of the codes in the description for all nine builds. Now, these builds are the top 10% MMR range on HS replays. So if you don't have HS replays, it is just here on this channel. So if you need any info on it, just feel free to ask in the comments below. Now, the very top nine builds here you see are going to be the ones that we're showcasing. So the ones with the highest win rate at PvP. Um, the game sample size isn't that big, but that might be because people are trying it and it's doing like really well recently. Um, HS Replays is a little bit behind, maybe like a couple of days or so, because it takes a while for you guys to play the games and for all that data to go onto their site. So... If you've seen this comp before, then that's probably because you faced it on ladder. And um, yeah, that's kind of about it. So let's head straight into this and start with our first comp, which is Dragons. So here we are with Dragons. It is a 66.1% win rate. Now we're starting with Nefarian, Longjin, and Yulong in our opener. And then on our bench, we're using Sinestro, Cookie, and Alex Straza. Now, the reason this one is so powerful is because Alex Straja just got a buff. So she now has her Dragon Queen Gambit only at a one cooldown. So being able to use the Amulet of Swiftness in this case is a one speed deal damage equal to their attack um, to an enemy equal to their attack. So this is really strong because of obviously there's a lot of comps out there that are trying to buff their bench and just get a big guy out to swing now at one speed this might not contest all of the comps because the pirates are really fast but it does contest a lot of the comps being able to just snipe something with a really high attack and then obviously you're using your standard dragon package at the start as well so you're in nefarian using spare parts to restore your dragons uh you're using Longs in with the bottle of infinite stars to be able to restore the health to all your dragons as well and you long with the pearl of you long to prevent dragons taking too much damage now flame jade buffet also got buffed as well so you can deny all of those valeras so this is another reason this comp is good you can block taunt every single turn and give your characters 10 health and denying stealth on those valera comps as well so all round pretty good dragon comp two dragons getting buffed so definitely worth playing this one okay next up we have tragore pirate so like i was just saying this one here is a 65.1 percent win rate now this is a really interesting comp this uses quite a lot of new stuff so we've got elise here in the opener with trigor and eudora now the idea behind this starter is to try and buff your bench with your uh your monkey ability so this is obviously going to be buffing your bench at the start of the game um and then obviously this rotates throughout the match you there with trigor because it's the strongest mercenary that the game has to offer and then eudora here with the cannon spawn being able to attack with the cooper the et to bring out your maestra off the bench to be able to then punch into something get in those crits and also putting all three of your pirates onto the bench ready for the late game um, which is really, really strong because Edwin is going to obviously come out with black flags, given your pirates full speed, um, full speed faster. So Sneed is going to come out using his active saw for zero speed, his disarm for zero speed. And also Eudora is going to come out with zero speed attacks and zero speed, uh, very low speed cannons. And Edwin obviously doesn't get the speed buff from himself but being able to position him in such a way that you manage to get some immune attacks off is really, really strong, especially once the bench has been buffed a little bit and having that trigor there to obviously just chew up some of your opponent's uh, mercs straight off the gate with this opener is really, really fun as well. So um, I'll run through the equipments with this one. So we've got the trinket, trigors, we got the razor claw, Eudora, we got the uh, summon the cannon, Maestro, we got the mask of Mimikai to be able to jump out the bench. Edwin's Black Flags and Sneed's Extra Blades. So that's it for this comp. Okay, now moving on to comp three. Comp three is Frost. 
there was no doubt Frost was going to be in here because Frost is one of the best builds in the game as well. So we got 63.6 win rate and we're using standard opener with Barna Jane and Lokala. Won't go too much into that. We all know how Frost works. And then on the bench, we're running Karen, Diablo and Sinestra. So Karen, Diablo, obviously we know what they do. They pair up and then Sinestra is just a solid green unit that you're able to use to be able to kill off those late game blues if you end up matching up against any obviously trying to keep them alive with the uh, mana barrier and the twilight extinction obviously very very effective as well so um yeah just standard frost build here um if you haven't played frost before if you're new to mercenaries then i definitely recommend giving it a go um it is annoying for a lot of people but it is a good build nonetheless next up we have a shadow yashira now this is a 63.4 percent win rate now, this utilizes Yashira and the ability to steal attack from your um, your minions, all of your mercenaries. So we're using a summon shadow version here. So you got Yashira, Kazagus, and Vuljin in the opener. And then in the bench, we have Queen Azura, Sylvanas, and Cookie. Now, this is an entire shadow build apart from Cookie. Obviously, Cookie's just in there for the appetizers and a few snipes. But yeah, the idea behind this one is you want to summon some stuff with Kazagus with Builder Golem. You're going to be able to do that quicker because Vuljin's going to have his Ring of Haste to speed him up. And then use Yashira to borrow their attacks and attack into a unit super strong, super efficiently. And just be able to do a lot of damage to a specific unit you're targeting really, really fast at a 3 speed. And then as of our bench, we got the Azura is obviously a Shadow Merc with the... The ability to AoE at zero speed if Vuljin is still alive, which is very nice. And um, being able to prevent those frosts if uh, you're matching up against a lot of frost to be able to prevent that with the Mage Paramount. And then Savannah, obviously we're summoning with Kazagus. So the Death Volley is going to come in handy here. And the Banshee Bolt getting a nice quick snipe with that as well. If Vuljin is still alive, um, he is a priority target because of how um, quick he makes the rest of the team. But once you've uh, reclaimed souls once, your Banshee shot is going to be doing just one speed damage to a specific Merc that you want, which is going to be insane with the Kazagas Golems dying off and then getting that Death Rattle as well with Savannah. So very nice build, very new and very fun to play as well. Okay, and next up we have another Frost build, though this is Trigor Frost with 62.2% win rate. So this was um, probably the best build going with trigal um once the rng didn't matter too much so everybody was hesitant with trigal and local are being the rng sort of two um you didn't know where local was going to hit so you didn't know what trigal was going to do but it turns out it's actually very very good to use and to be played against because the randomness of it just makes it just completely crazy um the bench i'm a little bit not so sure about so we got savannah's torande and sinestra it's a triple green bench so unless you're fighting a lot of blues this is going to be a very weird bench to play the reason for that is because i'm not sure why torande fits in this build um like i said these are all from hs replays so um i'm just taking all of the data that you guys have accomplished uh, that you guys have accumulated over playing your games and just chucked them into a meta video um but yeah, this is a definite strange one for me with Tyrande. She doesn't synchronize. Uh, she doesn't synergize with any arcane stuff on this build. She doesn't really do a lot, in my opinion. I'm imagining that the Frost carries this team quite a lot, and then with Sinestra being able to get those guys down to quite low health, and then Tyrande comes in, I guess, with the arcane to try and utilize getting a two hit maybe with that off there's no buff here for spell damage so it's definitely a strange one for me but the results are showing so feel free to try this one um there are obviously better builds but this one might be what you're looking for who knows so let's move on to the next one and next up we have shadow summons now this is 61.6 win rate now we're using cho nazoth and yashira in the opener and then bulljean Queen Azura and Sylvanas on the bench. So the idea behind this one is we're using the Sash of Scrolls for your minions to take eight less damage with Cho. Obviously, Nazof is going to get a spawn out. This is going to take less damage from retaliating attacks. Obviously, it's immune while he attacks. And then Yashira is obviously going to borrow their attacks and punch into some of your opponent's minions that you want. Um, and then obviously you've got your shadow bench. So once your Cho dies off hopefully it's the cho 
you then have um, the ability to use your shadow comp to then hopefully hope synergize and get that win. So Nizoff obviously has the Eternal Torment as well, which is going to be doing shadow damage at the start to everything. Um, with the minions surviving, you got the Corrupted, which is going to be able to destroy those minions and kill off, hopefully, a few of your opponent's mercs. And then, yeah, the Shadow Bench is just really strong, using your Vulgins, Ring of Haste to speed everything up. You're using minions again, so you want Savannah in there with that Death Volley. She's going to get really big. And then Queen Azura obviously heals up with Shadow with this um, her equipment here as well. So, yeah, all in all, a very, very fun build, very blue heavy but up against Trigors, that's not really a problem. So, okay, and next up we have Arcane Dragons. Now, this is 61.4% win rate. Now, this is probably one of the most consistent builds that have been going around on a ladder recently. So, we've got Nefarian, Trigor, and Valera as our opener. Now, this just utilizes Trigor to its fullest potential, being able to stealth and go really quick, being able to summon dudes to be able to get Trigor to pop off again is really good. And then we're using Karen, Longjin, and Tarande on the bench. So this is the nice Beast Dragon Arcane bench that everybody loves. So Karen obviously there for the reincarnation for going up against Savannah. So if it can clear the board out, this will survive in the late game. And then you obviously have your longs in with the Band of Burst and Novas for each dragon and beast that have died this game, game plus three arcane, which is going to pair up nicely with Tarande and this one where it deals 16 to two random enemies. If any die, repeat it, which is going to be obviously increased by the arcane damage. And if you get any crits, it's going to guarantee clearing up your opponent's board. So this is probably the most consistent build in the game at the minute, um, depending on all of the new stuff like if it's targeting this specifically i just think this one is a really nice build definitely a must try and a must play on ladder okay now moving on to comp 8 we have buff humans now this is a 57.1 percent win rate so not as good as the other ones but i wanted to showcase it because it's so unique and so different so we're starting with reno Tyrion, and elise now the idea here is to use reno to try and absorb a lot of damage with his dazzling flexing and then use Tyrion and Elise to try and buff up your bench as much as possible because your bench is all attacking mercenaries that are going to really want to get big so you can try and kill off your opponents just by pure damage and pure value. So we're using Leroy to be able to obviously come in with a zero attack if he's big enough. If not, you can wild swing, gain eight attack for two turns and attack a random enemy. Sometimes this is better than the Leroy Jenkins, but he's usually in there for... A cookie snipe and obviously just getting really really big with the ninja loot in it as well um sky Admiral rogers obviously gets really big and is able to use master technician to allow you to attack first if um if two speed is quick enough to be able to kill off something you can use this master technician even on leroy to get a random fast swing but it's mainly used to help crusaders blow get the death rattle uh, the death blow restores 60 health to your party so if you master technician for two speed on carriel and then she's big from your bench buffs and then you're able to punch into a say green mercenary doing crit damage for like 60 let's say even if this just gains three attack and it attacks it for 60 and then restores your party by 60 health it is really annoying for your opponent and really consistent and fun as well so yeah definitely a fun build to play not necessarily the best one but definitely one that is going to make you have a lot of fun with the game okay and comp nine last but not least we have monkey so this is a 54.2 percent win rate according to hs replays deck tracker we um aren't really sold on this one this is more of the meme deck that we have so we're going to be using the monkey in this one so we have ufa elise and valera now i believe they're all here to protect elise so Uther obviously is running the Librum of Sacrifice for the Death Rattle. Give your characters the Mind Shield so she doesn't hopefully die. You want to try and progress the Golden Monkey with Monkey Paw as much as you can. And then Valera is going to speed up your units as well with the Unnatural Smoke. And then as of the bench, we're using Mercenaries that just do big damage with a few AoE spells. So Local obviously has his Hailstorm which with Frigid Wind, if you're going up against something, is still going to buff even more. So that can be quite good. 
Nazoth we have his AoE once he's used his spawn of Nazoth. So this AoE is great. Plus the Eternal Torment comes out with a really, really big monkey buff. And then Cookie we're in there because of the bleed can scale ridiculously high if you manage to time it right with the monkey. Now I haven't actually been able to try this one myself, but that's how I imagine this comp works. Um, like I said, it's more of a meme build. You're not going to be trying to get the monkey out every single time to be able to kill off your opponents. This is just something fun that you can have with the game, which is different, which is what the game is all about. So I hope you guys do enjoy this one if it, it works at all. Some people are playing it and winning above 50% with it. So it must have some sort of synergization with these mercenaries. Okay, guys, so that is about it. These are the nine top highest win rate for top 10 players in the HS Replays community. So if you don't use HS Replays, then obviously you're not going to be comp contributing to these stats. But if you are, then these are the builds that you guys have had success with. Um, I will leave codes to all of these decks in the description below. So feel free to come back to the video multiple times in order to get these decks to be able to play on PvP. I hope you've liked this format of HS Mercenaries meta. And um, yeah, if you do, let me know in the comments um, if you want anything to change about it. Or if you like this format and you'd like me to do this more in the future once we get more big Merc drops. And obviously, as more comps come to light as well. Um, unfortunately, no gameplay of these comps. But this is basically a video for you guys to just come to and get decks to use yourself. Not necessarily see how they work, but to just test them yourself as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.